I was about six years old when I realized who my father was. I started to really respect my father for what he had done. And I wanted to be just like him. May 29th, 1953. 32 years of human struggle to reach the highest point on Earth is finally over. New Zealander Edmund Hillary and Sherpa Tenzing Norgay return from the summit of Everest triumphant. But they soon find out that reaching the summit is just the beginning. After the success of the climb, people would have hoped that it's a great moment in history. You know, everyone should be happy. But I don't think it happened that way. Two men from humble origins could never have imagined what impact their achievement would have on the world, themselves, and later, their sons. It's very innocent. My father came here to climb a mountain, and I think it was at that time that they started to realize this wasn't just any mountain. Now, 50 years later, the sons of the men who first climbed Everest return to confront the truth behind the icon. What's the real story on Everest? This really is a really awful place. At any moment, you think the whole bottom is going to fall out, and if you're holding on to a rope, you'll be OK, maybe. No one has carried more of that risk than the Sherpa people. What price have they paid in 50 years of climbing? I wouldn't encourage my son to climb because this is a very dangerous job. You can have a hundred reasons to die up here. Hey, Pete, yeah. you live? Over 1,200 people have climbed it. 175 have died trying. Yet the tug of Everest is as seductive as ever. Dad and Tenzing were up there. There was no one else on the summit pyramid at all. Now today, there's over 100 people. And if things do go wrong, you're going to see some people killed. Tell people to drop down. You guys got to stagger your people. Have 50 years of climbing tarnished an icon and changed what it means to survive Everest? I don't think we're going to get up at this time, Dad. In their search for answers, while battling the extremes, these sons will have to face the truth about the mountain, their fathers and themselves. I must admit, when I called out to you, I was pretty scared. Dad, can you hear us? Dad? Five and a half miles above sea level. It was once exploration's last great challenge. The object of a race to place a single nation's flag on what was known as the Third Pole. Today, the sons of Everest have returned to reach the summit again and learn how 50 years of climbing to the top of the world has changed a mountain and her people. Sherpa Tenzing Norgay's son, Jomling, sees the expedition as an opportunity to get closer to the true story of what happened to his father before and after Everest. My father did not want us to climb. He did not want us to be Sherpas on the mountain to risk our lives. He said he had done this so that we wouldn't have to. Joining Jomling is Sir Edmund Hillary's son, Peter. When my father and Tenzing climbed Everest in 53, it was a remarkable achievement for humankind. They really showed what people can do, and I'm incredibly proud of Dad for that. They've both grown up in this valley, the home of the Sherpas, and have each climbed Everest once. The expedition will be led by Pete Athens, who has climbed Everest six times, more than anyone who isn't a Sherpa. This will be my 16th expedition to Everest, and it's, I mean, it's a bit of a surprise even to me that I would have come here so many times. For 25 years, Pete Athens has been coming here, climbing with the Sherpas. He speaks their language and is also a Buddhist. 
but this time is different. This will be Pete's last expedition on Everest. He and the team will trek 35 miles and nine days up to base camp at the foot of the mountain. Some historians compare the conquest of Everest with space exploration, yet it took longer to get a climber to the roof of the world than to put a man on the moon. De meeste mensen moeten hun hoofd beschermen tegen gevaren van buitenaf. If I can see something that is completely impossible or exceptionally difficult, that's my quest. Maar sommigen lopen een groot risico door wat zich in hun hoofd afspeelt. Wat drijft hen, ondanks alle fysieke pijn? Oh. Waarom kunnen ze niet terug? Zelfs niet als ze de dood recht in de ogen kijken. De psychologie achter de topsport. De X-Force begint vanavond om 11 uur. VSO is al 40 jaar de vakspecialist in ontwikkelingswerk, die mensen in de derde wereld daadwerkelijk helpt. VSO vraagt u om een bijdrage van drie...